Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is Yohio. Today I wanted to talk to you about five things that will make you feel better in 2020. So number one, morning routine. And this is a big one, especially for me because I didn't really have a morning routine for the most part of my life. Being a professional artist and musician, working as a producer for creative things, I had a really irregular schedule and I used to get up at you know, 4 or 5 p.m. a lot and uh, sometimes just you know stay awake until 6 a.m., sleep for three hours, then get up and go to work again for some project. So I was really, really irregular in my sleeping patterns and I didn't really have a routine when actually waking up. I was just stressing to do the thing I had to do that particular day. So a morning routine, a steady, consistent morning routine really changed my life. And I mean this because I used to, to read all these books and they talked about morning routines and that getting up early and getting up the same time every day was really beneficial for you and that it was healthy and made you feel better and all that stuff. And I actually to be honest I didn't believe in it I was skeptical and um, I thought like this isn't for me I'm a night person you know all of these stories that you have about yourself and how you live your life but they're false they're just stories you know you can change you can try different things so I decided this year starting the first week in 2020 to try the um, 5 a.m. method to wake up at 5 a.m every single day and it's a structured program and I started this before actually reading the book called 5am club by Robin Sharma it's a very very popular book right now and there's a lot of people reading it all over the world it's huge and I get why because starting to get up at 5 I used the 5am club book as uh, one of the things I did when I woke up. I read the book and I started implementing his methods of the 5 a.m. club into my routine. And um, it has such profound effects on your everyday life. I mean, seriously, it, it's huge. So I really urge you to try that out. You can search for 5 a.m. club or Robin Sharma on YouTube there's a lot of interviews with him or you can buy the book even better and read it and try to do what it says and of course you can you can tailor it to your own life and your own perspective and uh, everything like that but I really really urge you to, to have a morning routine this year because if you're consistent and if you let your body sleep in regular cycles and um, your body gets into a rhythm you'll feel more energized and if the first thing you do in the morning is physical exercise to get that to get your blood flowing and you know just your system going and you start sweating and uh, you re release all of this serotonin and good things for your body and your your mood as well and you kind of kill all of those bad stress hormones the first thing you do in the morning so that's a great indicator for how you're gonna feel the rest of the day so you do that and that's the first part of the 2020 method that uh, Robin Sharma came up with the second part is to do some journaling or meditate or anything that's very introspective just sit there by yourself and have a cup of tea or something a cup of coffee and just relax and do some journaling do some introspective work or meditate or just sit and stare into the flames or something just do something calm and introspective inner work do that for 20 minutes after that you have the last span of 20 minutes of the victory hour as he calls it which is for learning so read something or listen to a podcast where you learn something or something motivational or you know listen to an audiobook or watch a motivational speech on youtube or whatever something that you can learn from 
something that you can grow from as a person and something that can broaden your perspectives a little bit. So I, for the first month, I used his book as my learning part every morning. So I was kind of the same time as I did this 20-20-20 rule and I did this 5 a.m. club method and used this methodology, I was using his work and his book explaining all of this in detail while doing the method. So I was reinforcing myself with the benefits of actually doing this because you need to understand I have always been a night person. I work during, I do my creative work, writing songs and stuff like that during the night hours, like from 9 p.m. until 5 or 6 a.m. was my prime time of doing creative work. So doing the exact opposite, waking up at that time instead and going to bed around 9 or 10 p.m., that's a huge shift for me and it, I mean it took maybe a week or two before actually getting into it and even then it was it was hard to get up you know it was it was really a struggle and it's still some days very very hard to get up but I do it and I push through because I feel so much better and I used to have a lot of anxiety and all of that is gone because of this one habit so Number one is to get yourself a morning routine. You don't have to do the same routine as I do or the same routine as in the book by Robin Sharma. That's just an example. But to have a routine is the thing to take away from this. So do that. Number two, meditation. And I love this subject so much because I've had a meditation practice going on for years and years now since I was a teenager and I really really love it because it gives me this this calmness and this, this serenity every day and um, I can't live without it like if there is uh, if there are days when I don't meditate for some reason if I if I can't get to it which is very very rare nowadays but it happens because I'm a human but when that happens, I really feel the difference in a negative way because I need that meditation. And it's, um, there's a lot of science coming out now and you know, it's, it's not only a esoteric or spiritual thing as some people may put it because some people are put off by, by thinking that it's some big you know, hippie thing, but it's not, it's just relaxing your body and focusing on your breath that it's that is the gist of it you know and of course you can do some transcendental meditation and stuff like that if you want to but you don't have to you can just do some mindfulness meditation to start with which is very easy to do and I mean there are probably thousands if not tens of thousands of videos about mindfulness and mindfulness meditation here on YouTube so you just have to search for it and you'll find someone explaining it probably better than I could ever do so I'm not gonna explain what meditation is I'm just gonna talk about the benefits because you can learn how to do that anywhere it's very easy so uh, you just have to get into it you know because you don't necessarily have to to make it a big thing I mean you can start out with just five minutes a day sitting in a chair and uh, closing your eyes and just breathing in, breathing out slowly and try to not think about anything. And I know it's, it can be hard at first, but that's all new habits and all new things that you try. So don't get discouraged if you don't feel the benefits right away. Because meditation is not something that you you know, you meditate one or two days for five minutes and then all of a sudden you're an enlightened, calm being. That's not how it works. You need to have a consistent practice and you need to go deeper and deeper because I didn't really feel any big difference in my life at first either, to be honest, but I continued doing it and I continued 
to, uh, to broaden my perspectives on meditation. I tried different kinds of meditation, different ways of doing it and different lengths of time spanning from five minutes to an hour to sometimes two hours straight and um, you know switching between a lotus position sitting to sitting in a chair normally to lying on the floor to lying in bed you know I tried everything to find what worked best for me and now I have a lot of different kinds of meditations that I do on a regular basis just to switch it up and I'm still learning new things but it really has a huge benefit on your psyche and on your mood and on your overall capacity to handle life because life can be very hard it can be difficult we all have our struggles we all have our difficulties and life can be hard and we all know that so to try and lift that burden somewhat we can instill habits that can benefit us and meditation is one of those things that really make a difference long term because you will see that when hardships come up when difficulties arise and when challenges are just getting at you if you have a steady meditation practice and you do that every single day and not just five minutes but i mean i would say 20 minutes at least is a good way to start if you have that you will see that you will react in a different way to challenges and problems that may arise circumstances that you may not like will be a lot easier to handle you won't get angry as much, you won't get irritated as much, you won't care as much what people think or say or do to you because you have this inner calm and you just don't care. You just don't spend your energy on stuff that sometimes you can't control or sometimes it would just be bad for you to engage in. You just let it be. And it's an amazing feeling but the thing is when you stop meditating regularly when you miss too many times that effect starts to slowly dissipate and go back to how it used to be and you start to feel the stress more often again so if you're gonna start a meditation practice I urge you to stay with it don't give up if you don't feel the benefits at once because you won't but if you keep on going you will steadily move into being a more calm and steady person that can just tackle the problems of life in a more sophisticated and calm way so meditation is a big thing and you can try out you know mindful meditation you can try out some transcendental stuff you can try out some buddhist meditation or if you're Christian, you can try out some Christian meditation. Or if you're atheist, just focus on your breathing. It doesn't really matter. It's just a thing of breathing in and out slowly and focusing on that breath. That's all it is. And then you can add to that. But that's all it is, essentially. So try it out. It can't hurt you. It's just a very great habit to have. And you can implement that in your morning routine into, you know, between journaling or doing some introspective thought. You can, you can do meditation too if you want to. I usually meditate a bit in the morning and then I do it maybe once or twice during the day or the evening. So there's no limit on how many times you can meditate a day. Just when you get your time, do it. Because I promise you, it has some really great effects on you. So there's nothing to lose. Just try it out. Number three, journaling. So this is also a great habit to have in 2020. Because we all have a lot in our minds. If you do your meditation right and you have your morning routine in place, then things will start to get easier. And journaling 
is something that you can do during your morning routine if you want to but I also urge you to do it before going to bed or whenever you feel like it so journaling is something that you shouldn't limit yourself with you don't have to do it just in the morning or just during night time or anything like that just do it when you feel like it because journaling has helped me a lot in ways that meditation can't in a way it's a very it's very good to combine the two I think but journaling basically journaling can be done in so many different ways that it's, it's hard to just explain it in a simple way but the way I do it or the way you can do it too is just write what you think just get your thinking down on paper or in the computer or whatever suits you I usually switch between my computer and my physical paper journal because um, it's just depending on my mood and what I'm writing about but I really recommend trying it out because as you write sometimes you just weird stuff comes up in your head and you just write them down and you kind of empty your uh, the trash from your mind in a way sometimes really deep stuff can come out on paper some things that you didn't know that you were thinking about you you kind of emptying your subconscious mind in a way that is profound in so many ways that you can find out stuff about yourself or about your worries or about your dreams or fears while journaling so it's a very powerful tool to get to know yourself better and 2020 is all about getting to know yourself better at least that is for me and a lot of other people that I'll see online or, or meet in person everyone is trying to connect to their themselves again not only to others through social media and all this internet activity that we're doing right now but really trying to get back to yourself knowing yourself because that's very hard for us to do right now we're always trying to show something to the world but we don't really know ourselves so journaling can help with that and it, it has really helped me discovering a lot of things about myself about my about my psyche and about my thinking and um, some of my unconscious subconscious habits and thinking patterns that I didn't know that I had and some of this stuff may be things that you want to change about yourself things that you don't like about yourself and some things may surprise you you just didn't know it and sometimes journaling can just help being a tool to get out all of your anxiety all of the things that trouble you and bother you or all of the injustices of the world or you know all your sadness and grief or whatever it may be things that make your heart heavy getting that out on paper or into the computer or however you choose to journal really helps unloading that burden from you because it kind of releases that into the world you don't have to carry the weight anymore so just let it out and let it go because it's very powerful to do that that's why I recommend having a daily journaling practice and I often use a kind of a affirmation journaling during uh, my morning routine to write empowering things things I want to embody during the day or during my lifetime traits that I wish that I had that I don't have right now or things that I'm good at and just trying to empower myself into being better and bigger and you know stepping into my power so I use an affirmation journal during my morning hours just to get my mindset going as I wanted to just to get my thinking in a positive way and, um, and you know just getting pumped about the day but then during the day or during nighttime before going to bed 
I can journal about anything. So sometimes I just let my mind wander and and sometimes I don't I don't really know what I'm writing. It's just like nonsense sentences that my mind comes up with and I don't really know what they mean or what I should have them, why I should have them. But it really helps, you know, uncluttering, decluttering your mind and um, it makes you it makes you stronger. It makes it easier for you to to see the faults in your thinking, in your thinking patterns, the things you need to change, the things that you feared that you didn't know you feared, and just random stuff that comes up in your head that you don't need to have in your head. So just get it out. Because you need space for good ideas. You need space for insights and happy thoughts. So just get that out of your system. Journaling is really good for you and uh, sometimes it can be painful to just look yourself in the eye because that's what you're doing but it's very very necessary if you want to know yourself and knowing yourself comes with great power so do it try it out i promise you you will find out so much about yourself your dreams your desires where you're faulting and what you're good at too. So do it. Number four. Four. Tech detox or dopamine detox. This is also very important nowadays. I mean, you don't even realize how much time you're spending on your phone watching stuff like this and I mean watching stuff like this is better than most things I hope but still it's a waste of time a lot of this is such a big waste of time and it's just made for us to to feel this this uh, quick rush of dopamine dopamine is our reward system and every time somebody likes our picture on Instagram or or uh, comments on our, our status or our tweet or whatever whenever that happens your reward system kicks in and you feel a rush of dopamine so we're kind of getting into a state of, of a dopamine addiction all over society and this is a big issue, like our attention spans are dropping like really badly right now. Young people can't focus on anything because there's always multitasking, there's, there's always something else to look at. People don't read books anymore. You skip through most of the YouTube videos even. I know you do. You're not watching from beginning to end, you're just like skipping through. Because you don't even have the patience to watch a video you wanted to watch. And that's how it is right now. And you're always scrolling and scrolling and watching all of your friends and people you don't know showing up their lives even though there's, it's far from the truth of the lives they're actually living, you know? We're all just showing the best parts of our lives mostly. It's all fake. And as soon as you step out of that bubble, as soon as you go one day without even scrolling through one single feed, you will realize how much time and energy you're wasting on these things. I would advise to, to have like a real detox. I mean, I started doing this starting 2020. In the beginning of this year, I said to myself, I'm not going to check social media anymore. I'm just going to go into Instagram or Twitter when I'm uploading something. And then maybe I'll check the engagement for a while. But then I'll just put my phone away and I won't look at it until next time I'm producing something. I'm uploading something. 
because then I'm not consuming, right? I don't need to watch all of these stories with people I barely know doing things I don't care about. And this goes for everyone. This isn't only my personal opinion. I mean, you all follow a lot of people and most people don't know most people they follow, right? So why does it matter so much to you what your friend's friend's uh, pal did yesterday? Why is that important? Just get that out of your life because you will start to feel power returning to you as soon as you stop giving away your power to your phone because it's really taking over your life right now and it's not good for you you can use all of that screen time to do something creative instead you can use all that time you spend on social media learning something you can take all of that time you spend on social media and mindless zombie scrolling through feeds to make a difference to exercise or to meet a friend in real life or to, to talk to a relative or, or a family member or play with your dog or whatever but you're actually using your time for something valuable and not just for the quick dopamine rush of just an information overdose that you have daily because we're all addicts of dopamine right now and it needs to stop and I don't mean that you need to cut it off completely I mean I still check it but I do it maybe once or twice a day and then I don't even pick up my phone if I'm not gonna do something specific but don't be passive. Use your technology. Don't let your technology use you instead. Because then you're the tool, not the phone. You're being the tool if you let your phone, social media and feeds control your life. It's not good. But don't take my word for it. Just try it out for yourself. Because I really really saw a difference in my well-being when I cut social media from my everyday habits. When I stopped scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and wasting hours upon hours of doing absolutely nothing. I started to feel more whole again. And that anxiety that I couldn't really put a finger on why I was feeling all the time started to disappear as well because social media can give us a lot of anxiety and we go around thinking why do I feel so bad all the time well try these things I've been talking about in this video and do a tech detox a dopamine detox for a while and see how you feel if you don't feel any better then that's too bad but I can almost guarantee that it will make a difference in your life if you stop focusing on stuff that don't really matter to you which brings me to my last point of this video number five five learn something new new skills because your life is built up of the skills that you have. I wouldn't be anywhere in life. I wouldn't be anywhere near where I am right now if I didn't have particular key skills. And I don't mean skills that I just have. I've developed those skills from not knowing into knowing knowing them quite well that's how you change your game for real learning new things things that you can implement in your life things that you can integrate into the things that you do for a living for example 
or things that you want to be able to do for a living. So for me, for example, I started studying Japanese when I was around 11 years old. And of course, I wasn't good at Japanese when I was 11. I wasn't even good in Japanese when I was 13. I was okay when I was 14. It takes time, you know? But Japanese, learning Japanese really changed my life forever. Really, really had a big impact on what I'm doing for a living, the people I hang out with, even the country I'm living in. Learning to speak Japanese was a game changer for me. That's because I took the time and I spent my energy, I invested myself into learning this skill. And now I have achieved that skill. I don't have to think that much about it. Of course, there's always new things to learn. There's, there's always stuff you can improve. But I can live in Japan. I can speak to anyone. I even write my lyrics in Japanese. But I couldn't do all of that when I was 11, when I started out. And if I hadn't started out, there are, I wouldn't be where I am today in my career. I wouldn't know the people I know today. I wouldn't have made friends with so many people that can't speak English. They can only speak Japanese. How would I be able to communicate with them and become their friend if, I, if they didn't speak a language I spoke and I didn't speak their language? It wouldn't have happened. And all of this happened because of my dedication to learning this skill set. So it's really important. And we often dismiss the importance of skills in our lives. We talk about education a lot, going to school, all of that. But we don't really talk about specific skills. And to be perfectly honest, to be really good at something will always outweigh your formal education or what it says on a piece of paper that you've studied. Your skills will always outweigh your education. And I'm not saying that education is a waste of time completely, but you need to focus in on learning new specific skills that can help you in your life because everything revolves around that. For me, not only Japanese, but also playing guitar was the other key skill that I developed actually during the same years, starting when I was 11. And I practiced on the guitar for seven to eight hours a day constantly and I went to school as well so there are no excuses I practiced my scales on the guitar while eating while watching TV while watching movies I was improvising in the same key as the soundtrack or whatever I was always on the guitar because I was dedicated and I was passionate about learning so I built my craft around that passion. So from a young age, I learned Japanese and playing guitar very well because I invested all of my being into that. And I invested so many hours, sleepless nights. So much effort went into learning these things, but they paid off because I wouldn't be where I am today without those two things. These are my biggest key skills. Because from being able to play guitar, I learned how to write songs. Being able to speak Japanese, I eventually learned how to sing in Japanese and write lyrics in Japanese. Something that most Western people can't do. But that's because I didn't do anything else but focus in 
on my goals and what I wanted to do and developing my skills, honing my skills. And I never stopped learning. When I mastered those things, I have my mind set on different things now. Soon I'm 25 years old. I'm not 11 anymore. I have other things I want to accomplish in life than I wanted when I was 11. I have other goals. Some of the goals are the same. But I have other skills that I need to develop now at this stage of my life than back then. And every year I'm reviewing what skills I need to learn next. What are the most important skills that I don't have right now that I need to have to be able to accomplish what I want? And when I realize what those skills are, I start taking the steps. I start doing, I start practicing. I start developing a game plan for myself to be able to get to the level I have to be in that particular skill. So in 2020, if you want to feel better, you can do all of those things I've talked about. Morning routine, meditation, journaling. Stop looking at social media all the time and being passive. And start learning new skills instead that will actually propel your success. It will take you forward in life. If you learn a new language, for example, a whole new world is opening before you. You will meet people, you will be able to meet people that you would never be able to meet if you didn't speak that language. You would be able to experience things that you would never be able to if you didn't speak that language, if you didn't understand that particular language. So language is a huge thing, but that's just one skill. But I want you to realize what skills can do to your life. And the only thing it takes for you is time, effort. And you both have time and effort in you. So start using that for your own benefit. And it will make a huge impact on your life. If you start learning a new skill now, this week, and you keep going at it for the rest of the year, and you don't give up, then look at your progress a year from now, 12 months from now. You will see what I'm talking about. And you will understand how powerful it is to stay consistent and to learn new things. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it was useful. I hope you got some insights from it at least. And I'm just here to help. So if you like this type of content or if you like my music or if you just like watching videos in general, click the subscribe button if you haven't, like this video, share it with a friend who may need to hear this or just unsubscribe and um, don't do any of the things that I said. Do whatever you want. But I'll see you next time if you want to. So bye bye. Until then, step into your power.